Hello, this is Steve Knight, um, and I'm here to talk through um, an episode of Peaky Blinders, episode six of series five. I'm watching it on my telly over there. The question is, where did the idea come from? Um, it's actually from things that were told to me when I was a kid by my parents. My mum and dad grew up in uh, Small Heath in Birmingham in the 20s, 1920s. Um, and they always told me stories about their childhood that I always thought was so glamorous and wild and amazing that I just thought, I always thought it would make an incredible drama. And what's good about it is that no one else sort of seemed to feel that urban working class uh, life bef between the wars was like, saw it in the way that I saw it, which was sort of like a Western. I just wanted to explore a character who um, <clears throat> was who obviously damaged by his experiences of war, as many people were um, after the, I think particularly the First World War because it was so face to face, it was so sort of um, really the soft human beings, the soft flesh, coming really directly into contact with the horrible hardness of artillery, machine gun bullets, you know, um, war before that had sort of, the technology wasn't such that it was such an uneven battle between man and technology. You know, it was people on horses um, charging each other. Whereas now the technology was such that you could be standing next to your comrade one minute and then you'd see him blown into his component parts a second later and just see what a human being is made of if you see what I mean so the whole concept of the human being is his soul must have been challenged by the fact that people you were very close to would just be laid out in front of you like meat if he's if, if if he ever finds happiness and contentment then the thing that makes him extraordinary will probably go away um and so i didn't want to <laughs> give him that i mean i feel as if i know him so well and all the family so well but it just felt that for him to continue on the road that he's on he needed that avenue to contentment to be gone vulnerable he'll think he's vulnerable mostly to himself to his own demons you know i think that i often refer to the idea that he's actually looking for somebody strong enough to kill him and he hasn't found that person yet um and is it going to be him that does it to himself is one of the questions asking when did i know that killian should play tommy uh there was never anybody else even uh, talked about at any point. I'd just made a film with Jason Statham. If you can imagine the two of them in the... Jason's brilliant. He's just different. Um, but for that role, I was considering Killian and Jason Statham. I met them both in, in Los Angeles to talk about the role. And opted for Jason because not because but one of the reasons was physically in the room you know Jason was Jason and and Killian when you meet him isn't Tommy obviously but I was stupid enough not to understand that and um, when this came up uh, and I, I sort of realized how great an actor he was having seen stuff in order to assess for casting that other role um, and then he came and we talked there was a few of us and he sent shortly after he sent a, a text saying remember I'm an actor um, which is absolutely um, the thing because he can transform himself to the extent that you see on the screen now, where um, if you meet him in the street, 
it's a totally different human being and that's some actors do that some actors don't do that some actors can't do that some actors can do that but what he can do is extraordinary with himself with his the whole presence of who he is well it's always an absolute joy to be writing for two actors like Killian and Tom Hardy um, he's, he's just, as you can see he just takes over as soon as he appears just as he did in Inception which is the first time I ever thought oh my god um, when he just walks into a, 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 onto a screen full of all these famous big actors big names and he just takes over and that's what he does every time he's on. Um, he loves to have some sort of thing with his face. He loves to have some sort of, you know, because he's so good looking and he's sort of, I think he's sort of bored of being good looking. Um, and he's such a great actor. So what's it like to write this? It's, it's you have to make sure you're on, you know, on form if you like, but you know that they can both pull off stuff without you having to write it, if you see what I mean, that they'll, that they'll just do it, um, that it will be there anyway, so you don't have to spell it out, if you see what I mean. And it wasn't really a conversation, it's just, Alfie can't die, basically. <laughs> um, you know, I was talking before about it's um, difficult, you know, when you've got a character that you really like and is really popular and, and writing them out. And it was a consideration, as you can imagine. Um, but in conversations and texts back and forth, uh, we agreed that Alfie can't die and we can't do it without him. And I'm so glad because he really adds something to it. And I know that a lot of people, you know, love that character and that look and, and what he brings to the show so I'm, I'm glad we had that text and phone conversation times a few it was a I suppose it happened gradually you know the first first time first show when it went out it was sort of critics were sort of mixed and, and weirdly the um people you'd least expect were picking up on the fact that everybody had a working class accent um, which was sort of the point but um, gradually people got into it um, and I think people got into it first before it sort of got hooked into into the, uh, you know um, the media response to it but it was definitely ground level where the thing started to catch on because people started having the hair cut and wearing the hats and and um, it, I don't know it, 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 lots of things came together at the same time but suddenly there was a look um, that seemed to come from the show and not just that but a sort of attitude not attitude but uh, a willingness what I always wanted this to be was to tell a story about working class people that wasn't about isn't it a shame or aren't they hilarious um, where working class people and the adventures and misadventures and the drama of, of their lives are as important as any other group of people um, which is, again is quite an American thing because the American West it, it is all about you know, ordinary people if you like um, and so I really wanted to get that um, feeling of, and what's been the most heartening first of all the fact that it's international that people have no concept of what Small Heath would be like or Birmingham in the 20s or anything like that people have responded all over the world and, and phenom in a phenomenal way um, and the people who've responded um, is, is phenomenal. I think in terms of when did I know it was going to become, it was going to be a cultural thing was when uh, Snoop Dogg got in touch 
through his agent and said he'd like to meet me to talk about Peking. And so I met him in a hotel room, it's a hotel suite in Covent Garden. And we just talked about everything. We talked about his life, how his life, how he saw resonances, I don't know how, saw resonances in Peaky of how he grew up and how he got involved in gang culture. Um, equally, I never, I'm so old, I don't know how to, whether it's ASAP or ASA, but I think it's ASAP Rocky, uh, came to London and I spent a couple of hours with him talking about Peaky. And people, you know, lots of famous people um, have expressed that they really like it, which is great. But I think what's really important is that, you know, on as in the States, in England, people love it, but it's also got a sort of hook into a different, you know, people who are not young, who are middle-aged and, and people who are not, who, who, who have no personal reference to this sort of world or this sort of life seem to get it. And, um, I, these things are luck. Is Tommy's son Charles named after Charlie Chaplin? Chaplin, of course, made a famous spoof film about the fascist dictators. And yes, he is, because I'm, I'm a one man campaign to have it acknowledged that Charlie Chaplin was born in Birmingham on a gypsy camp called the Black Patch. Who intervened? What happened? And of course, I can't tell you, um, and you'll have to find that. Um, but it's all part of the trajectory of Tommy Shelby, where his plans work until they don't, and then um, he's pulled back, always pulled back always pulled back to where he's from and I suppose the, the original question I asked before I started writing 